Hey there, it's your boy Foxy, back for more relationship stories. Update, am I wrong for not accepting my sister's relationship with my ex, despite her having cancer as a teenager? Original post, my 25 female father married my stepsister's 23 female mother when I was 4 and she was 3. We've lived together most of our lives and are a family. She and I were extremely close. She developed cancer when she was 14 and was sick for about 2 years. She since made a full recovery. During that time, my parents became understandably overprotective. They also asked a lot of me. I quit my extracurriculars so I could get a job and the money went towards her medical bills, also so I could drive her to appointments. I didn't go to dances, and any fun activities I did needed to include her. I did almost all of this willingly, the exception being having to quit my high school volleyball team. I did throw a bit of a tantrum about that, but was swiftly punished. And I think having one emotional breakdown was pretty chill given the circumstances. Anyhow, I go to college and meet my ex, we'll call him Ben, when I was a junior. We fall in love blah blah blah. He and I move in together when we graduate, so we've been living together for about three years. We were serious, until July when I walked into my bedroom and saw him banging my sister. I broke it off, tears were shed, he moved out etc. My sister apologized at first, but then backed off. I thought she was giving me space, but last week she called and asked if we could meet up. She told me that she and Ben were in love and were just telling me as a courtesy before they started posting photos online. Distraught, I left her in the restaurant by herself and did not pay my portion of the bill. She later venmoed me asking for the money. She told my parents, who then called me to their house, telling me how disappointed in me they are for not supporting my sister's relationship with Ben. They brought up the fact that because she had cancer as a teenager, she never learned proper social etiquette and has a hard time meeting people. I don't buy this, in part because I've seen her socialize just fine, and since we spent a good chunk of the time she was sick together, that would also mean that I should have bad social skills as well by that logic. They then told me that if I don't accept my sister and Ben's relationship, they may have to go no contact with me. I reminded them that I'm also their daughter and they should understand my point of view, but they are adamant that this is about me being jealous of her. For the record, I'm not jealous of her. I'm not upset that Ben picked her over me. I'm sad about the end of the relationship and do feel betrayed, but Lord knows that I don't want to be with a cheater. What I'm upset about is the fact that my sister chose Ben over me. That she slept with Ben knowing he and I were in a long-term committed relationship and continues to be with him knowing how much it hurts me. Now no one in my immediate family is talking to me and I'm getting messages from aunts and uncles and cousins telling me that I'm the idiot and a selfish witch. Now for the top comments before reading the updates. Not the idiot. Your parents are enablers. Cancer as a teen did not shrink wrap her and isolate her from the entirety of human mores and values forever and ever. Amen. From what you describe, it sounds disturbingly like you have been deemed the cannon fodder of the family. Take some time for yourself and put them on the back burner. Is it just cancer or any potentially life-threatening disease that gives an exemption? I really need to know because I might have behaved unnecessarily for many years. Not the idiot. I could have died when I was 8 and spent a week in a hospital on IV antibiotics. I'm not dead because my mom mentioned that I had chills with my fever, which are apparently normal for adults but only occur with children if they are in pretty bad shape. I had a fever of over 104 by the time they got me to the hospital. While I certainly wouldn't compare that to having cancer, I was sick for a whole week. I think I was out longer when I had chicken pox. But yeah, this is baffling. Cancer survivor doesn't equal cannot be held accountable for anything hurtful they do for the rest of their lives, especially when it was almost a third of her life ago, and she's an adult now. I'm guessing this sub is skewed, but a whole lot of people seem to not know that sleeping with partners of siblings and friends is a no-no, unless you clear it with them first, if, you know, they've been broken up for several years and it was mostly amicable. Not wrong, I had cancer as a teenager. I've managed to not sleep with either of my siblings' partners weirdly enough. Maybe you were on a different treatment plan. God, you're right, it'll be the socialized healthcare stopping me from living this timeline. I really am very sorry that your entire family are terrible. You are handling this with the grace that few could manage. Oh, don't you worry. I'm totally falling apart right now. I just have a dark sense of humor and no choice but to keep going with my life. Edit. I've been given a lot of food for thought. To be honest, while I've had moments where I've been resentful or upset about my teenage years, I've always thought that I did the right thing for my sister and for my family. And that time wasn't all miserable, I was very close to my sister and we made things as fun as we could. But I didn't think of it as an abdication of my parents' responsibilities or that they were doing wrong by me, which many of you pointed out. I definitely have a lot to think about. 
Thank you again for making me feel less crazy about all of this. Mini update. Sometimes you can only laugh. Just got off of the phone with my cousin who saw this post and said he could explain a few things. I asked him why he was on Reddit instead of school. He asked me why I was on Reddit instead of work, and I said touche. He told me that after my conversation with my mom, she went to his house and talked to my aunt. And here's the deal. Turns out my sister is not only in a relationship with Ben, but four months pregnant, which means she and Ben were banging for longer than I had even guessed. Apparently, my parents are so adamant that I forgive her because I'm already ruining their experience of their first grandchild. That's right, I'm less important than my stepmom posting ultrasounds to Facebook. This is where we're at. Anyhow, I called out of work sick the rest of the day, and I'm going to drink a lot of alcohol, like a lot of alcohol, and then start thinking about what the heck I'm going to do. Now for the first update. I was asked for an update and thus, here I am. Two things to clarify before I update. 1. I didn't have a horrible childhood. The favoritism started when my sister was diagnosed. I moved out soon after and have been pretty independent since then. Not saying that how my parents treated me during those years were a-okay, but I wasn't Cinderella. 2. I did not drink myself into oblivion. I had two white wine spritzers, but I appreciate the concern from folks. Anyhow, the update. I got in touch with my sister and asked her to meet up again at a park, no bill involved. I asked her if she was pregnant and she told me the truth. She said she wanted us to still be in each other's lives and that she wanted me to be in her babies. A redditor mentioned that she may ask me to be the godmother and that person was correct. But as many of you pointed out, if I didn't cut her off, I'd just become her bank and daycare employee. So I told her I could no longer be in her life and I left her crying on a park bench and felt like the crappiest person in the world. I emailed my parents and told them how betrayed I felt and that I'd be cutting off contact with them. To my stepmom's credit, she apologized. She explained that she never thought my sister would live to have kids and that she let her emotion over that get the better of her. Understandable. My dad said nothing, which is honestly what sucked the worst about all of this. Ben tried messaging me from a burner account for the first time since the breakup, but I blocked him without reading it. I didn't go nuclear and post the story to Facebook as some suggested, but I sent an email to the extended family members who I care about. I explained the situation and how I'd be distancing myself from my family. Some have made it an us versus them situation, and as much as I appreciate the support, feeling like I'm in some valiant battle just makes me more tired. So, I haven't been talking to much of anyone in my family. I feel lonely and crappy, but I think I made the right decision. Anyhow, not the most exciting update in the world, but hopefully everyone knows that I'm not dead. I do really appreciate the support I've gotten, it made me smile during a really horrible time. And hey, if anyone in the greater Boston area wants an extra guest at Thanksgiving, let me know. And I left her crying on a park bench and felt like the crappiest person in the world. You aren't. You made the right decision. Sometimes people aren't good to be in your life, and you have to do things even if they are hard. Keep trying to live your best life. Yeah, the sister really did this to herself. It's mind-boggling to think that you can do something so cruel to someone and expect them to just brush it off with no consequence. I'm glad OP is creating some distance here. There's no way the family wouldn't continue taking advantage of her. I feel so sorry for OP, considering her dad has shown his true favoritism and now basically knows that she has lost her parents' support. I hope she gets through this and finds people that truly support her. They might come around once the consequences of their actions sets in now. Lots of people will take advantage of you as long as they think they can get away with it. I'd still recommend OP taking some time away for now, even if he apologizes though. I'm sorry things turned out this way and that you aren't a priority to your parents. But seriously, does she not realize that? Hey, you and Ben were still sleeping together during those months and he could have just been stringing her along. B. Has she never been in a relationship? How would she feel if you had done that to her? C. She can always wonder now if Ben is cheating on her with someone else, but it would be karma. Ultimately, I hope your parents realize that you are just as important as she is, and their behavior is pretty horrible. Good luck. A. According to her, neither wanted to hurt me by telling me, which, though. B. She's had a few boyfriends, but they've only lasted a month or two. C. For her sake, I hope he doesn't. D. My stepmom told me that they'll welcome me back with open arms when I choose to come back. I'm just not sure that I'll come back. They won't be giving up on my sister. That's the fun part of giving up on them. You don't have to care anymore. You don't have to feel hurt or play games. You get to just be. That's what you will start to feel when this all normalizes. Just give it time. Find a new hobby or dust an old one off.
Make something of your complete own that none of them were invited or included in. That will be your place of solitude. The rock that you set up shop on. Second update. Hi, some people were interested in an update, so. 1. I am spending Thanksgiving with a friend and her family, so I won't be alone. Thanks to everyone who offered to host me, it was so sweet. 2. I'm still not in touch with my family, but I know that Ben and my sister are having problems. I know this because he showed up at my place and cried for 3 hours. 3. I'm going to go to New Mexico in April. Planning is underway. Happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate. Now for the third update. I think my old ex sabotaged my relationship with my new ex 27 male. To make a long story short, my 26 female breakup last summer with ex number 1 26 male was volcanic. He's now expecting a baby with my stepsister within the next 6 weeks or so. Since I found out about the pregnancy, he's tried to get in touch with me 6 times through email, text, burner accounts, has tried to get mutual friends to talk to me for him, and showed up to my place once. The latter was the only time I humored him. He told me he was sorry, that he loves me, he doesn't want to be with my stepsister, and wants to get back together with me. I told him tough luck, he made his bed and now he's got to lay in it. With her. I haven't dated much since July because of my life's implosion. But in November a friend from college messaged me out of the blue. We hadn't talked in a long time. He 27 male, referred to as X number 2 for the rest of the post, and X number 1 were good friends, but had a falling out over something fantasy football related the year after we graduated, and I stopped talking to him out of solidarity, or whatever. Anyhow, we go on a date. We click. We go on a few more dates. We become exclusive in early December. I was feeling really hopeful about this until this morning. I was supposed to meet X number 2 at a New Year's party last night. He got there before I left the house and texted me saying that X number 1 was at the party and asked whether I still wanted to come. I declined and went to another friend's house and have a pretty good time. I tried calling X number 2 at midnight but he didn't pick up. I didn't think much about it. Anyhow, I go to bed late, and when I wake up this morning, I have a message from X number 2 saying we're done. I couldn't even respond because he'd blocked me everywhere. I talked to a friend who was at the party the exes were at last night, and he said the two of them had spent a good chunk of time chatting with each other, but he didn't know what they were talking about. I'm not close with anyone else who was at the party, so I don't really have anyone else to ask. Like okay, it was a two-month-old relationship. I'm sad but I'm not bereft. But the paranoid part of my mind is really concerned that X number 1 said something that resulted in X number 2 becoming X number 2. X number 2 has made it abundantly apparent that he doesn't want to talk to me again, and I don't want to push that boundary. But I'm so confused. I could contact X number 1, but I get the feeling that will open a floodgate of drama. I could also try talking to other mutual friends to see if they've heard anything but I also don't really want to spread this as a rumor if it wasn't true. I don't know. I'm at a loss. Any advice here? I'm spiraling thinking that my ex is going to try to ruin every relationship I have for the rest of my life. Deep breaths. Do nothing. You are right, any contact with ex number one will bring drama. So sit tight. If your ex number one interfered, the very worst thing you can do is overreact right now. Ex number one has been desperately trying to get your attention. Don't give in. Don't let ex number one know he's got you right where he wants you. Inevitably, you'll learn more about what happened in time. Let it be. As awful as this is, remember that a man who will believe your ex after a few minutes of conversation over spending two months with you, without even speaking to you, is not a man to waste many tears over. If what you think happened is what happened, then your ex number two is crappy judgment in people and not much spine. Thank you. I needed to hear this. It sucks to do nothing but it's probably the right course of action. Unfortunately, I'm thinking that ex number two isn't the only person with crappy judgment in people and that I need to figure some things out myself. There are four possibilities here. 1. Your exes rekindled their friendship at the party, and out of solidarity, ex number 2 agreed to dump and ghost you. He chose his boy over you. It sucks, but it is what it is in this case, they were friends first. 2. Ex number 1 said something disgusting and untrue to ex number 2, and instead of confronting you about it first, he went the dump, ghost route, in which case you've dodged a bullet. Who would want to be with someone who blindly takes an outsider's word about you? 3. Ex number 2 had some kind of substance or alcohol-induced mental breakdown, and in an out-of-body stupor, did what he did. I think it's pretty self-explanatory why no one would want to be with someone like this. 4. Ex number 1 told ex number 2 about the drama he's caused with you. Maybe cried to him about his love for you. Could have said some deranged stuff. Ex number 2 might have decided the drama and craziness is too much for him, and went scorched earth. 
Sucks, but it has only been two months, and if he was really scared off, understandable, because he needs to do what's best for his mental well-being and maybe even safety. In any of these cases, you should leave it. We can speculate all day about what happened, but unless he breaks his silence over it, it's a waste of energy. Better to focus that on self-healing and staying far away from these cruddy people. Or X number one stole X number two's phone and typed the message and blocked her. Now X number two thinks she's ghosting him. To be honest, I wish it had been one of these. Turns out, he got wasted, hooked up with someone else, and blocked me so he wouldn't need to have an uncomfortable conversation. He knew that after everything that happened, cheating's a bit of a trigger for me. X number one is guilty of many things, but innocent here. I was being paranoid. Now for the fourth update. I'm beginning to think that there's something wrong with me. My last two partners have cheated on me. The first was a very serious relationship. We lived together, we talked about marriage and buying a house. He even took two pictures of us as kids and photoshopped them together to show what our kids might look like one day. The result was terrifying but hilarious, and I had it as the background of my phone for a month. I walked in on him sleeping with my stepsister. Now she's pregnant, due in the near future, and he's with her. I know he's not happy. I know he regrets what he did. I know that he loved me, and none of that stopped him from sleeping with my stepsister in our bed. I've spent so long now being upset at her and writing him off as just a bad decision that I wasted time on. But now I find myself mourning what we had. My stepsister and I grew up together and have loved each other most of our lives. So it felt like that was the betrayal. But he and I chose each other. Out of all the people on the earth, we looked each other in the eyes, committed to each other, and made the promise to stay faithful. And he lied. And he lied and he lied and he lied. And he let me go on loving him while he lied. And then a few months ago another guy comes into my life, and for the first time in ages I felt hopeful. I thought to myself that maybe I could actually move on and live my life. I wasn't in love with him, but he was the kind of man I thought I could fall in love with. We were exclusive for about a month. Before we made the decision to be exclusive, I told him everything that had happened with my first ex and told him that I could never be with another cheater. I wake up on New Year's Day to a text saying we're done. When I tried getting in touch, I found out he'd blocked me everywhere. Turns out, he met someone at a New Year's party and hooked up with her. Instead of telling me, he just blocked me everywhere and sent a lackey to message me a few weeks later with the real story and a half-baked apology. I want to be angry, and maybe a part of me is. But as I'm sitting here, I'm just thinking. What if it's me? What if I'm just not lovable? What if it's never going to happen for me? The thing is, I've been a pretty confident person. I went through BS as a kid, but I got through it and grew stronger. I'm pretty good looking, though I've admittedly put on a little weight in the past couple weeks. I've been told that I'm fun, I hold down a good job and make decent money. I also live my life according to my values. I've always put my family and partner first, because that's just how I believed it should be done, and I thought that I would be prioritized in turn. I've lost most of my family, because they'd rather have my stepsister's baby in their life than me. My friends have been fair weather for the most part, and I know that I'm a laughingstock in my friend group as much as they pretend to pity me to my face. I feel the little spark I've always had fading. I don't chime in on conversations anymore. I've stopped putting on cute clothes when I go out. I don't plan anything, so I don't have anything to be disappointed about. Soon I'll be the same age as my mom was when she died. I never knew her, but I've always loved her, thinking of her watching over me. I don't remember the funeral, but it was one of those funerals where there wasn't a dry eye in the house. She lit up a room people tell me. She was a good woman. In my worst moments, I wonder what it would be like if I died right now. Would anyone cry? Would anyone care? Would anyone even come? Anyhow, sorry for writing a novella. Just, not sure what to do anymore and who to talk to. If you read all this, thank you. It is not you. These people didn't cheat because of you. They didn't cheat because they thought less of you or that you were unlovable. No, they cheated because they are low character, lying, cheating, self-centered snakes. Those adjectives say nothing about you. So stop thinking that way. Victims of infidelity want reasons for why people cheat on them. It turns out to be quite simple. There is something basically wrong with the person who committed the infidelity. It's never you. It's always them. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry that you have gone through all of this. You just happened to go out with a couple of a-holes. Who hasn't? Like you said about some of the other things in your life. It made you stronger and this will also. Don't change or give up on your values. You will find the person for you and it will be worth it. As for your stepsister, keep in mind she is with a cheater and one day he will most likely cheat on her and she will be raising a kid with a cheater for a father. Stay positive that things will work out. You have a lot going for you and you should always remember that. 
Fifth update. Hello folks. I thought that things on the internet died after a couple days, so color me surprised when I still get requests for updates on the regular. Long story short, I don't have much to update. I didn't end up going to New Mexico because I conveniently got COVID the week before I was supposed to go. The baby was had, but I have had no contact with the baby or their parents. I've done a pretty good job of insulating myself from news about them and the rest of my family. My life is pretty much the same as it was. So, sorry to the folks who are hoping I have some kind of happy ending to slap onto all of this. Things are improving just because time barrels on, and you can grow numb to most anything given enough time and distance. But I have had no grand revelations, have not met the love of my life, nor had elaborate revenge on those who have wronged me. I am going to Europe for the first time in October though, so that's exciting. I will say this, while I appreciate the solidarity and sometimes colorful language used to describe my sister and Ben in my DMs, I wholeheartedly ask everyone reading this not to waste their energy on hating them. They're now parents to a newborn, and regardless of the things they've done in the past, I hope that they can come together as a happy family and raise their child in a loving healthy home. Hating them doesn't do anything for anyone, including ourselves, in the long run. Anyhow, that's the non-update update. I promise that if I meet the love of my life at the top of the Eiffel Tower, or more likely stuffing my face with waffles and bruges, I will post another update. Until then, you can assume that I am living, trying my best, and am very appreciative of all of the people out there in the world who have read this saga and reached out with support, even if I have not had the energy to respond to everyone. Now for the last update as of October 17, 2022. Hi, just wanted to give a more recent, less depressing update. I am currently in my hotel room in Paris, eating a cream brulee in bed, reading a romance novel, and about to go to sleep early. All is well.